Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Siobhan and I'm a second year medical student studying at King's College London. And I make YouTube videos about medical school and university, vlogs, stay in the life videos, get into medical school videos, videos with medical school advice, all of that. So go check it out right now and if you like my channel, if you find my videos interesting, if you think it's something you'd be into, then hit that subscribe button and join me for a lot more. Anyway, so in today's video, I'm going to tell you about which exam you have to take to get into medical school, the UCAT or the BMAT. Now, you're probably thinking, why are there two exams? Which exam should I take to get into medical school and what's the difference between these two exams? Well, I'm going to answer all those questions for you today, right here in this video. But before we get too deep into this, I want to warn you that although I'm comparing these exams, you can take both. You don't have to pick one. So first, let's start with a little introduction to both exams as well as talking about what the content of each exam is. So firstly, we have the UCAT, which is the University Clinical Aptitude Test. And like it says in the name, it's an aptitude test and it assesses your reasoning based skills. So it has five different sections, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, decision making. Those four are assessed numerically and then you have situational judgment which is assessed slightly differently it's assessed in bands so band one to band four band one's the best band four is the worst and most questions here are multiple choice and you don't have any short answer questions or essay based questions you have a couple of true false can't tell questions and you have a few questions where you have to connect stuff but yeah that's about it and on the other hand, you have the BMAT, which is the Biomedical Admissions Test. And this is a knowledge-based exam, knowledge of science and maths from GCSEs or IGCSE. It's required. It's basically 10th grade or year 11 math and science. You have three sections here, the thinking skills section, a section on scientific knowledge and application. And then you have the written task, which is like an essay. Now let's get into the pressing question of which university requires which exam. So you're probably thinking of which medical school you want to apply to and not of which exam you want to take. So let's start by talking about the BMAT. So the BMAT is only accepted by seven different medical schools. So the ones that accept the BMAT under every circumstance include Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, Leeds, Lancaster, Brighton and Sussex. Yeah, those ones. And now you have two others, Kiel, which accepts the BMAT for international students. And then you have the University of Manchester that accepts the BMAT if you're in the A104 or A106 course. So check Manchester's website out for more information on that because it's kind of complicated. All the other universities accept the UCAT. And let me just try to name a few of them off the top of my head. So you have King's, Bristol, Birmingham, Southampton, Edinburgh, Glasgow. Yeah, those are just a few I can think of, but there are many more. Now, one of the few things these exams share in common is the duration of both of them. So they're both two hours. And now in terms of when you have to give each exam, the UCAT has a testing window. So you can give it any time between July 1st to October 1st, generally. So basically the beginning of July till the beginning of October. So you just have to select a date in this testing window and you have to check whether that date is available at your preferred testing center. And if it is, you can just give the exam then. The BMAT, on the other hand, has two specific testing dates. So you have to give the BMAT either in September or in November. But this year, the September date is not available due to COVID-19 disruptions, but yeah, normally there are two testing dates. Now let's talk about the type of preparation required for each exam. So the UCAT, you're dealing with an acquired skill, so it requires what I like to call sparse preparation. A little preparation every day over a long period of time. So I would suggest around a couple of hours of preparation every day for, um, let's say, one to two months. More than that, you'd be compromising time you could be spending on other things and less than that, you're probably not spending enough time pre preparing or you've not spent enough time acquiring the skill. 
The BMAT, on the other hand, deals with knowledge that you probably already have because you've already given your GCSEs, IGCSE exam, 10th grade exam, all of that. This requires just practicing answering BMAT questions. So you potentially require a shorter period of preparation that could be more intense. So more hours spent every day over maybe just a couple of weeks. Now that we've discovered all the basic objective information about both exams, let's get into a bit of evaluation. So first, let's talk about why the UCAT could be better than the BMAT. So the UCAT is obviously more widely applicable. There are many more medical schools that accept the UCAT compared to the BMAT. Then the UCAT is also more flexible in terms of when you can give the exam. So you have a entire testing window to give this exam, whereas with the BMAT, you only have two specific dates, or in this case, in this year, just one. Now, a disadvantage of the BMAT related to that is the fact that if you give the exam in November, you're giving the exam after you've applied to medical school. So you don't know your results for the BMAT when you apply. So if you've applied to many BMAT universities or all BMAT universities, you could be applying with a potentially poor BMAT score. That could really tank your opportunities of getting into any of these medical schools that you've applied to. Now let's talk about why the BMAT is better than the UCAT. So the BMAT could potentially be more predictable because it is a content-based exam, a knowledge-based exam, so you know what set of knowledge will be assessed in the exam. And the UCAT, since it's skill-based, slightly more unpredictable, you could end up scoring a lot better than you think you would, or you could end up scoring a lot worse. The BMAT does have a very small range of medical schools that accept it, however, they're all very desirable medical schools. You have Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, and Brighton and Sussex Medical School, which is really ranked great when it comes to student satisfaction. And then a disadvantage of the UCAT is that it potentially requires a longer period of preparation because it deals with a lot of very new skills. So it takes a while to get comfortable with and it requires a lot of practice. Now, one question I want to ask you is that are you someone who likes memorizing information, likes answering scientific knowledge-based questions, who likes dealing with biology, chemistry, physics, maths. If you are, then the BMAT probably would be something you're more comfortable with. But if you're someone who likes aptitude tests better, who likes answering skill-based questions, and who likes, you know, solving problems, then the UCAT may be better for you because the UCAT involves a lot of that and the UCAT is very time restricted so if you're really quick and you're really good at answering questions in a short period of time then the UCAT may be really good for you then as well. But at the end of the day you don't have to make a choice you can take both exams because I know a bunch of people who took both exams and did really well and I know a bunch of people, including me, who took just one exam and did really well as well. We've all ended up in medical school, so at the end of the day, what this video is supposed to do is not to give you a right answer to the question, is the UCAP better or the BMAT, but it's to give you information so you can make an informed choice as to what option is the most suitable one for you. Is it taking the UCAT, taking the BMAT, or taking both? So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was useful. I hope it was informative. I hope it helped you navigate these entrance exams. And if it did, drop a like down below. Hit that subscribe button. Leave any comments you want down below. Asking me any questions or anything like that. And also share the video with your friends who may be applying to medical school. And yeah, with that, I will see you in the next one.